Perhaps one day we will explore together, and perhaps one day uh, a Starfleet captain will have a Gorn on his bridge with that same rubber head and also an Abraham Lincoln outfit. Captain's Log, star date 98059.01. After a lengthy debriefing following the Taurus 2 incident and a personnel change, the USS Sharp is once again heading out into space. Unlike the fancy Constitution classes, however, instead of boldly going where no man has gone before, we're boldly going places the Enterprise has previously been, and in keeping with that, we're going to Edrin 4 to check on a dig where relations are tenuous between the Federation research teams and the Gorn hegemony. Arriving at Edrin 4 after an extremely long ship ride, things are slightly tense, as explained by Captain McKinnon of the USS Zhang Ha. She allows the USS Sharp to beam down a survey team, but the Gorn begins scanning the ship as it heads in the transporter range. Ensign Scavron informs Talassa that the supplies in the team are ready to go down, and they're sent down, with the Sharp remaining in orbit to do a planetary scan just to make sure. They discover a strange signature, possibly an impulse drive, but nothing conclusive. The next step is for Talassa herself to beam down personally, and she does so, bringing along the new chief medical officer, Baroque, Ensign Scavron, and of course, Ensign Hunter, that incredibly annoying tool. After some running around taking mineral scans, of which Ensign Hunter starts to take some very undue liberties, this looks like a good place to start our scans. Things go from tense to deadly, as the survey team is attacked by mortar fire, blocking their path back to base camp. The Gorn, in all their rubber-headed glory, attack the survey team, but are dispatched fairly easily. The USS Sharp's security chief calls down to explain that the reason the Gorn have attacked is because one of the ships exploded and they think that the Starfleet ships in orbit are responsible for it, so beaming back up is a pretty bad idea. I'm starting to think Dr. McCoy had it right. Transporters are not only dangerous, but according to the last mission, you can just get back into the shuttle bay no problem even if there's a boarding party, so why wouldn't you take a shuttle? Scavron decides to use the same trick that Kirk used back when he fought the Gorn, and so Talassa has to gather a bunch of materials in order to create an explosion to knock down a rock to create a bridge for the team to cross. In another taking of liberties, Ensign Scavron instructs Captain Talassa to cover him and Hunter as they construct the bombs. Despite Talassa being a tactical officer and thus having the classification required for such a task. And Talassa would be way better at it than Hunter. Listen to how Scavron tears into him as they work. Crush that coal up good, Hunter. Not like that. Finer. Careful with that. Potassium nitrate can react explosively with these materials. Now mix it with the coal. Carefully. I'd rather not get blown to pieces today, if you don't mind. After getting back to the base camp, they find the scientists held hostage by the Gorn, who are dispatched fairly quickly. The fighting slows down, so the Sharp manages to beam up the team, although it's clear who the transporter room favors based on that beaming order. Back on the ship, Talassa speaks with Captain McKinnon and swoops in to protect the USS Zhang Ha when the Gorn return to attack. The fight is slightly unbalanced, with the Gorn using mines, but because they're the plucky protagonist ship, they manage to pull through, and the Gorn retreat. After sending some supplies over to the Zhang Ha, McKinnon notes similar strange readings to the ones that the USS Sharp picked up earlier and a scan of the destroyed Gorn vessel indicates Romulan sabotage. Before Talassa can take care of the Romulans, the Gorn ship comes back for round two, and once again gets its scaly butt kicked. That's enough to make them answer a hail, and Talassa attempts to explain the situation. I see no Romulans, only Federation ships. Do you think me a fool, Captain? 
Normally I wouldn't, but I just can't take you seriously with that rubber head. Barney the dinosaur has more dignity than you. Most convenient, Captain. But I am unconvinced. Produce these Romulans that you claim destroyed our ship, or prepare to pay for your crimes. They're Romulans. The most important thing that they can do is cloak their ships. How did the Gorn not know that? Scavron realizes that the Sharp can release a set of nanobots. Courtesy of Ray Palmer. That will release a high-frequency pulse that will disable their cloak. They're not going to be sneaking around for quite a while. Your death, I regret it, is necessary. While the Gorn have the honor to fight one-on-one, -on -one, the Romulans have no such honor, and between the USS Sharp and the newly crippled Gorn ship, they barely manage to eke out a victory, but they eke out a victory nonetheless. The Gorn are impressed, which repair relations enough for the survey to get back on track, and paves the way for Abragorn Lincoln to serve on the bridge of the USS Thelonious of the 25th century. After debriefing Captain McKinnon, the USS Sharp heads out on their next adventure. Post-mission follow-up. Overall, this mission is pretty fun. It's still early on, so there's a lot of running around in the game telling you exactly what to do because it's teaching you, but it's not super heavy-handed. The combat is good, and even for an early mission, it's not too easy to take on the other ships like it was in the tutorial, so it's a good challenge. By far the biggest problem with a lot of missions in Star Trek Online is the balance between ground and space combat. A lot of the newer missions will solely focus on either one or the other, and it's usually space combat, and that just gets exhausting. But this mission is perfectly balanced. We spend just enough time down on the planet and just enough time on the bridge. My only problem is that unlike the SS Azura mission Stranded in Space, which is one of the first post-tutorial missions for the Vanilla Starfleet faction, there aren't any aspects of the mission that utilize the various classes like the SS Azura has, which I feel might have made this mission feel stronger and given players a better sense of their class, especially since Talasa doesn't even have a kit yet, so regardless of which faction you play, it's basically the same each time. Throwing the Romulans in was a great choice, because it... With such a short time that we spend in the 23rd century, it gives a chance to get all the noteworthy and famous TOS baddies back in their 60s style outfits. And besides, the mission gives you a great opportunity for not only a photo op at Vasquez Rocks, but a great photo op with the Rubber Gorn. With all that in mind, I give In the Shadow of Cestus a 9 out of 10. It's a superb mission, and despite a few minor nitpicky gripes, like how long it takes for your ship to get from Earth Space Dock to Edrin 4, especially with the starter level warp core, I had a lot of fun playing it. Next time, we head into deep space to meet a familiar face. Don't worry, there's no poetry in that next mission. Careful. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on the channel. And if you'd like, you can also find my videos on any of these fine websites. And if you want to help out the channel, you can support us on Patreon. See you next time.